I never studied painting. All my, my experience with putting paint on something came from graffiti. And the kind of graffiti I did was always really simple. As I started to paint in a studio, you know, I would paint these, like these letters and it would be like straight lines and, you know, everything, I would try to make it perfect and it just drove me insane. You know, I grew up in New York, I'm from Queens, Forest Hills, and, um, you know, I grew up, I was a teenager in the 80s, and I was into, you know, I was into skating, and, you know, everything from hardcore to hip hop, punk rock. Like, I grew up in a culture of like, you stole your paint, you wrote illegally you made your own markers or you found your own caps, you know, and you, you took care of them and it was all tools and you had to like learn and understand everything on your own, like this cap was good for this or this paint was no good or whatever it was. When I started just doing drips on doors or mailboxes, you know, I got a lot of positive feedback. People were really interested and they thought it was really cool. The fire extinguishers is something that, you know, I didn't invent it. I wasn't the first one to use it for those means, but it was another example of reappropriating something to basically use as a tool. It acted very similarly to the markers that I made. I moved to San Francisco I went to school for photography. I lived there from 92 to 98. I don't know, it was easier to get materials. So from a graffiti sense, paint was more accessible, markers were more accessible. All kinds of things were more accessible to me because in New York, like, stuff was so locked down. I probably started making crank around 93, and that was it. There was no business plan. There was no T-shirt company. There was no street art, it was just friends and having a good time. And, you know, I was able to kind of have my own aesthetic on the street and stand out from the rest of the people. And since I had my own kind of tool and materials, you know, people had to figure that out just to get to where I was, you know, so it was just being that little bit ahead of the curve. So I moved back to New York. I was living in the Lower East Side, and I met these guys who opened a store called A Life. They were just like, look, this is really interesting what you're doing. We think you could sell it. You know, we'll help you. And it became this creative project. I made some crink. We made a logo. We made some labels, put some directions on it, uh, put it in their store, and it sold out, you know, right away. So they got press. They had crank there, other shops saw that and wanted it. And then at the same time, I would hook up with, with you know, like the Iraq crew. They were young. I was, you know, I'm a little, I was a little bit older at that time, so I wasn't really going hard. These guys were really going hard. And so I'd give them crank and they would just be out every night writing until all of downtown was basically covered. And that got a lot of attention because everybody was like, what is that? You know, what is that? How are they doing this? It's crank. I run a business, you know, as part of, as, as one part of something that I do. But I also work on art and design projects. And it's really difficult sometimes to be doing both because mentally they can be really different kind of spaces. People ask the question like, oh, you know, you were in the street, should stay in the street, and, you know, who's to say that I'm not allowed to evolve, you know, and I really love being behind the brand sometimes because the brand is more, it's a brand, it's not really me, and I like kind of like just brand it and market it. With me, sometimes it's like stuff is like, you know, it's emotional, and I kind of want to have I have to be able to do whatever the hell I want to do. There's definitely been some great opportunities for 
public art project and travel, and I think that a lot of people are beginning to try to organize things themselves. And, and I've definitely been involved in things where, you know, they get the community involved, the local community, and they get business owners to contribute walls. They fly in artists from all over to paint on walls and as part of a greater public art project. And it's all people who are just really interested in art, but maybe it's not like a formal gallery setting. It's more interested in the public space and kind of youth culture. We are at Lofton Space in Honolulu, Hawaii. I've been on Queen Street for about the past eight years now. Slowly made my way into this warehouse. We acquired the front. We had a denim store. And before the denim store, we had a streetwear store called Queens. And we carried Crink. So I was in contact with Crink about five years ago. Uh, when we were planning these shows, I thought it would be so cool to bring him there because, I mean, he's such an inspiration to so many artists out here. And the simplicity of what he does is amazing, but he's the expert in dripping and ink. One big thing for both of us, I think, is art for social change, and it really affects what's going on, in, especially our economy in Hawaii. I've lived in Portland and San Francisco and Japan and in Hong Kong. She's lived in San Francisco and New York and Paris and stuff. And we're exposed a lot to that kind of artwork, and we love it. We wanted to, uh, we wanted to bring um, what we saw out there in those cities to Hawaii. We knew it was going to be hard. We knew that there was going to be a huge educational aspect to it because it's not as common here to have art shows. How's it coming? Good? Oh, yeah. Well, I've definitely done some sculptural pieces, and I'm really interested in working the sculpture and this comes back to like, this is like very architectural, you know, and I'm also do things that are very minimal and those things are really interesting to me. So I think that, you know, this shape and this size, is, it's really not foreign to me at all. I've done a couple of things that have been much smaller, but I just felt this space, there was a really good opportunity and Jasper and Tiffany were down. You know, and they're ambitious, and I think it's, I think this is ambitious. You know, it's still a small underground space. We're just trying to make something happen that is going to be, be a little different, maybe, from some of the other things that they've done. I've definitely done a few, like, things like this that are really buildings or large walls, interior or exterior, all painted with fire extinguishers. You know, I've done all over from Moscow to Prague. I've been really fortunate. <laughs> Dry. Wall is hot. But you're really dealing with architecture. You're dealing with, with the angle of how a wall is seen, or maybe it's a rooftop and you gotta climb to it, or maybe it's got a corner or there's a ledge and you gotta, you gotta paint on the ledge, you gotta stand on it foot wide ledge to paint the wall and you're painting a 10 foot wall by as tall as you can reach or something. And all of those things make you consider space really differently. And so that was a really big influence for sure on like my process. I don't write graffiti anymore, but I still see how it's such a big influence on like what I do and how I do it. In the beginning I had done some stuff with more colors, but then I just pared it down and just kind of like, like worked within a smaller palette because it was just easier to make, to make decisions. And I really liked yellow and blue and it was really just the blending though of them making green that became really interesting. They're very natural colors. It's like the sun in the sky and you know, it might sound corny, but it's true. And I think that there's something that people recognize in that. With colors, you know, because I've always been in this urban environment, can bring a lot to those often drab places. And so, you know, this is a cinder block wall. It's just, it's not necessarily architecturally noteworthy. But I think to bring color to that is, I don't know, that's like part of something that I'm just interested in doing.
when you do stuff in the public space, you know, basically anyone can see it. It's free and it's available and people come by and there's a reaction and, you know, it's almost always positive. Oftentimes more people care about just advertising something. But I think that public art is important.